little people made of paper. They lived in a little paper house near to a river. Every morning Garmi would look out of the little window of his little paper house and watch the sun rise over the distant horizon. As he went down to his little fishing boat, he would often look up into the sky at the bright yellow sun and wonder where it went to each evening before it appeared again the next morning. Little fisher boy in your little paper boat Early in the morning when the sun comes out Happy little fisher boy, fish till evening comes. One day when Garmi was fishing, a large paper fish leaped out of the water into the boat. Pingu, for this was the fish's name, Ask Garmi if he would like to see the golden palace of the great sun god Apollo. The adventure would take him on a long and exciting journey. Garmi, who had always thought how beautiful the sun was and had wondered where it went to each night, agreed to go with the fish. Pingu told Garmi that they must first go to the cave of Mersing deep under the sea, for it was only around her cave that the magic seaweed grew that would prevent Garmi being burnt by the great fire of Apollo. Quickly down they went, past coral reefs and sunken ships, shells and crabs and coloured fish. Past coral reefs and sunken ships, shells and crabs and coloured when they reached the cave of the mermaid Mersing, she was sitting on a rock singing a beautiful song while many brightly coloured fish performed a little dance. At the end of her song, Mersing gave Garmi the magic seaweed and told him that he must next go with Hai Ling, the seahorse, to find Tararillo, the flying fish. Garmi so quickly through the water that it was not long before they reached the surface and were soon flying high above the waves and onto the island of the Japawong bird who was to take Garmi on the last part of his journey to the palace of Apollo. When Garmi arrived at the island, he saw the most beautiful flowers and the strangest birds and butterflies that he had ever seen. Brightly coloured birds were singing and flying in large circles against the pale blue sky. Listen to the birds sing gaily as the sun shines brightly by the willow gently swaying in the breeze. had eaten the magic seaweed that would prevent him being burnt by the great fire of Apollo and was having a wonderful ride on the back of the Japawong bird to the Golden Palace. Garmi told the Japawong bird that he wished Ori was with him, 
for he felt sure that it must be quite dark over the river by now, and Ori would be worried because he had not returned home. The Japawong bird told Garmi not to worry because it would not be long before he saw Ori again. <coughs> Ori, meantime, had gone to the shore to look for her brother when suddenly a large shell spoke to her. You must sing the song of the silver star whereupon one of Nocturne's messengers will come down from the sky and take you up to the golden palace of Apollo where you will find your brother Garmi. Little star, oh little star, please take me to your nightly king that I may there my brother find. Hear this, my little song. Ori sang the song so beautifully that Nocturne the Night King himself came down in a silver coach pulled by four silver white horses and took Ori high above the hilltop and onto Apollo's kingdom. Imagine Garmi's surprise at finding Gauri at the Golden Palace. Apollo made them both very welcome. Great God Apollo, King of power and might, rules all his kingdom with majesty and might. Great God Apollo, King of power. Ori and Garmi were so happy that they decided to live forever with Apollo and Nocturne and help them to rule their wonderful kingdoms. Oh.